Our next speaker is legally blind, but no one can deny that he has vision. He is the person that saw the financial crisis in America long before it happened. He raised the concern at the White House, and no one listened. He went to Wall Street, and they turned their back on him. And three months later, the market crashed. He's been on the cutting edge of renewable energy. When others were talking about pumping more oil, he was looking for alternatives to oil. And he has been a visionary in the development of high-speed rail. He realizes the importance between traveling rapidly, traveling efficiently, and traveling economically as a mode to stimulate the economy, not just in New York, but in the entire Northeast Corridor. He also recognizes and can see into the neighboring country of Canada and has worked with the minister and the Canadian government to bridge the route of high-speed rail from New York City to Albany to Montreal. So as his term in office is winding down, his enthusiasm is winding up for high-speed rail. He's a charger. He's a person that doesn't quit. I had the honor of having his father as one of my mentors, the honorable and legendary Basil Patterson, along with others like Percy Sutton in, in New York and Bill Bracey, true leaders of this community, the state, and the country. We're going to continue to work with the governor after he leaves office, and he's going to continue to be an advocate for high-speed rail. Please give this gentleman a round of applause, Governor David Patterson. Good morning, and it is an honor uh, to speak before the stakeholders in the development of implementation of high-speed rail uh, as we move forward as a public policy. And I would like to thank uh, Thomas Hart for that very wonderful introduction, and uh, also to Andy Coons, the president of U.S. High-Speed Rail. I saw Congressman Paul Tonko in the House, and we're in the district of one of the great advocates of high-speed rail over the last generation, Congressman Gerald Nadler. Uh, in addition to that, um, we have with us the President Pro Tem of the New York State Senate, New York's current leader in high speed, the development of high-speed rail public policy, Malcolm Smith. And of course, to Secretary Mineta, I want to thank him for his very wonderful presentation. Now, if you remember all the way back in the beginning of, of uh, Secretary Mineta's presentation, he said that um, he walked here today rather than using a motorcade. And um, he saw that as actually uh, a way that he is trying to reconcile himself with the pedestrians and the, and the commuters of New York. But actually, he made a wise decision because walking in this area is high speed. And uh, so it was very self-serving on the part of the secretary. And uh, he's been a tremendous, tremendous asset. It's um, so wonderful that he's continued to work, particularly for the development of high speed rail, long after he was our longest serving secretary of transportation. And it is uh, a gift just to have him here this morning. Um, he did talk about the recent decisions of a lot of administrations to abandon transportation pro uh, projects. And I'll speak on that briefly. Um, the governor of New Jersey has made a decision uh, that uh, there is uh, not a, a desire to participate at this time and put the resources into the ARC tunnel. And I am not 
in any way going to criticize the decision made by any executive in this country when 48 of the 50 states are still coming out of deficit and when we have a tremendous recession, perhaps the worst one that we've had in 80 years. And, uh, but what I would say is that decision was somewhat anachronistic and it was sort of counterintuitive to historical development of, e of economics, which is the only way to get out of this crisis. We're not having a spending crisis, we're having a revenue crisis. And it's the way that we build revenues that's going to accommodate the spending going forward. And so what I would point out uh, to all of you is that this is how New York, which you've chosen to be the forum of this uh, 2011 high-speed rail conference, and it is the first time that you have done so, and put it in this area, and we thank you for that. But New York really symbolizes what can be the public policy of the future. And I would illustrate it just by talking about another 19th century miracle, such as the one uh, involving President Lincoln that Secretary Mineta described just a few moments ago. And it was that New York City had a population uh, that was approximately 3% of the national population in 1820. That was true of the major, uh, that, uh, it, uh, New York City also engaged in 3% of the economic development of the country at that time. And that was true of all of the emerging cities. Sh uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania was 2% of the national population in 1820 census and did 2% of the business. And Charlotte, North Carolina was 1% of the population. Uh, and did approximately 1% of the business. Their states had a little more of the economic development when tabulated than they did. By the 1850 census, New York City, one city in this country, had gone from doing 3% of the country's business to 47% of the economic development of the entire United States. And the way they did that is because New York State built the Erie Canal and implemented the Erie-Lackawanna Railroad. By 1850, not only had New York now grown to accommodating 47% of the economic development interests of this country, but now consumed 14% of the country's population. The people moved where the jobs were. And now, people are moving away because we have been unable to establish the industry in the last couple of decades that has sustained New York's um, workforce development. And then what you wind up are, uh, are states, as we see, that are heavily accommodated by social services, not by economic development, and that's when states start to go into recession. So what could get us out of this? High-speed rail, among other aspects. Because what were, what were the congruent uh, benefits to having the Erie Railroad and building the Erie Canal? Transportation. New York took advantage of its geographic location, about an hour and a half shipping time closer to any European port than any other port on the eastern seaboard, and they leveraged it by building up their port, the ports and the high-speed rail became the center of rail freight and the epicenter of New York State's transportation system. This can happen again, not just for New York, but it can happen for the whole nation, as the Secretary described, building uh, 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 links between Texas and Massachusetts, between Florida and Illinois. And so what uh, the reason we are so happy to have uh, U.S. high-speed rail here with us today is because that's what this administration has been doing. I made it clear from the time that I came into office that there will be high-speed rail in New York. And we have gotten high-speed happy around this state over the past few months. On June 4th, our New York State Department of Transportation and Empire State Development Corporation held a high-speed rail forum very similar to this one, where we brought together uh, those from the public and private sector and also um, national scholars on the issue of trying to find the strategies to accommodate uh, the development of high-speed rail. We recognize uh, that in October, 
that the Federal uh, Railroad Administration granted New York State's Department of Transportation $28.5 million for what is the high-speed intercity um, uh, uh, rail project. And in doing that, it will accommodate what would be repairs, environmental, and modernization projects all over the state. Just on October 29th of this year, the President Pro Tem of the Senate, Malcolm Smith, and I went to Niagara Falls to announce what would be discretionary funding uh, that will build up the infrastructure and the manufacturing base of high-speed rail facilities. And after decades of struggle and negotiation and debate, we have broken ground just in the last two, uh, three weeks on the Moynihan Station, which will replace um, uh, uh, the Penn Station facility and will build back the architectural mastery of the old Penn Station, but more than that, it will be the transportation gateway to New York City, building up the slots for trains for the Long Island Railroad, for Metro North, for Amtrak, and also for New Jersey Transit. That's what we're going to do to create a workforce development, and that's what we're going to do to span economic development all over the state, which will have transportation efficiency, uh, which is what we're going to need moving forward. Just in the last few weeks, we have announced our climate action plan. This is to accommodate the reduction of uh, uh, of fuel emissions by 80% by the year 2050, which a lot of other states are doing. But more than that, as we switch away from air travel to rail transportation travel, we will eliminate if, uh, uh, a lot of the fuel emissions. Now, whether you believe in climate change or not, there's no one that denies that these are pollutants, and this uh, is a way to do it through high-speed rail. And we're doing this during what has been the most deadly and unfortunately uh, the, the most destructive economic period of our issue. We are building now for the future and the future will arrive on high-speed rail. Uh, just in the last uh, year, New York State has submitted the first uh, uh, transportation plan to the federal government so that we can receive federal capital money in 22 years, because we would like to be in the forefront of this entire process. As is the problem with a lot of Northeast states, there are really two high-speed rails. There's increasing the speed of trains to 110 to 120 miles an hour, and then there's the high-speed rail that we see in Japan and Germany that we eventually would like to meet where trains could um, move from the distance from here to Albany in approximately 28 minutes. In order to do that, we're going to have to have the same cooperation from federal agencies, from local communities, from policymakers all over the country, from other states, and from the industry that we have right now. So this is a leap forward, this conference and this cooperation in the achievement of high-speed rail protocols in this country over the next 10 to 20 years. I can't thank all of you enough for choosing New York as your venue, and you couldn't have uh, found a better venue because we want to be right within that area. We feel that the future is high-speed rail, and the future is also in New York, uh, which is why we have chosen to go in this direction, and we're so glad that you have as well. Thank you very much.